Hi everyone, continuing the previous video, recall that we are basically relying on two main different aspects to evaluate a classifier. The first is to figure out a way to emulate the, the future by trying to hold out some of the data such that the classifier trains in another set. So we mimic somehow the, the general case in where we are gonna have to classify the data points that weren't seen during the training phase. And after we do that, the second stage is gonna be to come up with some key indicators that tells us how well is performing the classifier on that unseen data. So we are still in the first part, right? Previously, we saw the holdout methods and now we are moving forward with this. So now the next method, it is called random subsampling, which is basically a repeated holdout. So instead of just once dividing the set in training and test, we're gonna repeat that procedure B times. So as we can see here, we go and first divide our database in two uh, sets, training and testing. We train one model M1, and then we classify the data points that were held out here, and we create a, a prediction here, right? And we repeat the same thing B times, right? So after that, we're gonna get B sets of real versus predicted class, and then we typically average the results over all these uh, B rounds. Very simple, right? Remember, again, we need to make sure we are taking stratified sampling because if we have an unbalanced set of classes, we want to make sure we keep the proportions and all the classes are present in the testing and in the training scenarios in the different rounds. So remember, always choose stratified sampling also here in random subsampling. One note is here that recall that we have B different classifiers, right? Because everyone was trained with different training data, so we end up with different models. Later, we're going to see uh, what, what is the actual final model that we send for production. Another technique it is very known is called bootstrapping, and there's a main difference here. So let's say we will create one scenario where we divide again our data into testing and training, but there's a catch here. We are going to create samples of our database taken with replacement. It means we grab our database and take samples, but we give them back to the original database to allow that sample to be chosen again. So if we do that, we will end up in D1 that has many data points that are repeated here. And also we're gonna have a set that we call D minus D1 or D backslash D1, which means like here are going to be included all the data points that were not picked when we built D1, right? So we have a clear difference here. This, this data set, it is called also like the out of bag entries. And they are the ones that were not chosen by the model. So recall that here we have all the instances that were not selected for the one. And what we do here is like we train our model from D1, but we use then our model to predict in both sets, that's one of another difference, right? So we make a classification for the one and also for the instances that were not seen by the classifier, right? That's a new thing here. And we repeat the same B times. So we create again B rounds with B models that are trained from the first selection of data points and we test the model in the same set and also in the instances that were not selected. And to be more precise here with the notation, again, we have D cases. So here we can improve our notations for a C for a class. We have the letter A is used for the cases that were selected. The letter B is used for the cases that were not selected. And then we classify. And the, the number, of course, is it depends on the round. And the M means that it was the prediction made by the classifier. So the question is how we combine the results from these two different sets, from the sets that were seen by the classifier and, and the unseen ones. And the idea is like, we're gonna get one accuracy here by comparing how close was the classification made with the model versus the real one. And uh, the same thing for the unseen cases. And we're gonna obtain two different accuracies. The same thing for D2, the same thing for round three. And if we continue, we're gonna do the same thing for the round B. So we're gonna obtain two accuracies on every round. How we combine them? Well, what we do is we, we obtain like a weighted average. 
right? So I'm going to explain why these specific numbers. Okay, so in the first round, we combine both with this weighted average. Same thing for the round two and so on. Until the round B, we combine both accuracies into one accuracy. So why these weights? This thing is very interesting, actually. Recall that we take these samples with replacement. So if we were to calculate the probability of being selected for one data point that exists in the initial database is 1 over n, right? So the probability of not being selected is 1 minus 1 over n. If we want that one specific point never gets selected, means that in the n iterations, we need to make sure that that data point was not selected. So we need to repeat this expression n times, multiplied n times, right? And this expression has a very known limit for a big n of n. The limit is e to the power of minus 1, and that number approximately is 0 0.368, right? So this is the probability of not being selected. So, and the authors of this method published this paper that is referenced down here in the link, and they recommend these two numbers to actually weight the calculation of the final accuracy of the whole set, right? So here we can see that the expected number of different cases is roughly two thirds of the whole database. So this is why sometimes you hear that in general, when you make bootstrap samples, you roughly get two thirds of the data selected and one third is out of the bag right? Recall that the size of D1 is n, is exactly the same size of D, because we repeat this procedure n times. So at the end, what we obtain is b different accuracies that we can average them. Recall that each accuracy was using the 0.632 and 0.368 numbers to average these two accuracies. Okay, so some insights on bootstrapping. Usually, bootstrapping helps us to compute any statistic from a database. For example, if we have one database, we can create bootstrap replicas of the database of the same size, right? Taken with replacement. And then, for each of these replica, we can compute the statistic. Could be anything, right? It could be the standard deviation or, or whatever. And then, we can create an histogram of the value of that statistic, and later from the histogram, we can compute the mean and the standard deviation of that statistic. So it's a very like effective way to compute any statistic in a data set. Why we don't just go straight and compute the statistic from the initial database? Well, in general, when we have a small database, we believe that the database we have is not fully representative of reality. So when we create bootstrap sample, we somehow get a more realistic estimation because we get like different replicas that's supposed to be similar if we knew the original mechanism to generate the data and we create different databases from that mechanism. It's just the difference is like instead of the mechanism to generate the data, we use our own database as a source of a data generation procedure. So in our case, the statistic we are using here is the accuracy of the classifier, right? As I mentioned before, it's interesting to see that bootstrapping treats the data as a measurement of its sound distribution. So this is why the bootstrapping emulate having like a generated model. And that's why we sample with replacement, because we use the same database as a mechanism to generate our own samples. Another comment here is like there is an inherent bias in the bootstrapping procedure. For example, when we are taking samples with replacement, the less frequent data points will be more absent in our replicas. It's natural because they are less frequent, so they are not going to be chosen as frequently as the data points that are more repeated in our database. That means that we end up underestimating the average standard deviation of our bootstrap data. In other words, it's like if our original data has some sort of variance or standard deviation, when we create replicas, the standard deviation of our replicas will tend to be slightly smaller. 